I'd like to also welcome the people on Facebook. I'd like to wish you all a blessed morning. And those who are on Zoom, welcome. And, uh, you know, we want to just try to get into the Word this morning. Because it's the Word that transforms. It's the Word that picks us up. Is the word that changes our situations. Now, I'm going to carry on from Genesis chapter 1. The last few weeks we have been uh, speaking about, uh, or we have looked at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, where we looked at the basic questions, uh, uh, the, the, the four basic questions of creation. And this morning we are going to look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Now verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, as we look at these few verses, I want you to remember the stage of creation the earth was in. Remember, it was hanging in space, the earth was not shaped, it was unformed, it was undeveloped, it was unfinished. The face of the whole earth was covered with surging, raging, primeval waters. And there was a heavy, dense fog or a mist, a heavy mist hung over the waters. The earth, we are told, was also wrapped in a blanket. A blanket of pitch black darkness. Now I want you to picture the scene. This scene was an eerie scene. It is a picture of the primeval uh, earth. An earth that had not yet been fully developed. An earth that had not yet been fully formed. An earth that had, a, that had an eerie, dense fog hanging over, turning gigantic waves, raging primeval waters. All, blank, all being blanketed under the cover of pitch black darkness and soon after this in verse 3 we see God now is ready to move to the next stage of creation God is ready to launch what is known as the six days of creation the time that he took to create the universe and what we saw just now in scripture is the first day, the creation of light. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 again. Verse 3 says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let me repeat that again. I want you to get into your spirit man. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. I want you to realize something this morning. I want you to remember something this morning. God's word created light. The phrase that you see in verse 3, let there be, is one word in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, there's only one word. It's only one word. It's Haya. H-A-Y-A-H. -A -A now, the, the, the meaning of this word in the Hebrew, it, it is a strong, active, imperative word. 
That means God is commanding light to become. God is commanding light to come into existence. Just like everything else in the universe. God created light. Now, I want to define to you what light is or what is light. Because we take it for granted. Light is a radiating energy that radiates out from some body or other or other right now in the case of the earth light radiates out from the body of the sun science tell us that there are billions of suns and stars remember a sun a star is a sun scattered all throughout the universe billions of stars that radiate and give off light Signs also tell us that heavenly bodies, suns and stars are being born and formed and dying all the time. Scattered all throughout the universe, all throughout outer space, there are billions of stars in various stages of birth, in various stages of growth and death. And these stages range all the way from the first stage where gases begin to form and create an intense heat over to the formation of a solid mass, a mass or heavenly body of volcanic flame over to the burning out of that volcanic flame and the eventual death of the sun. Now, if you, if you go back to verse 1 of Genesis chapter 1, it says that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Right? That means God had already created the heavens, the stars and the suns of the universe in verse 1. What then does it mean here in verse 3 when it says that God said, let there be light? And there was light. Now it can mean one of these three things. When God said, let there be light. Right? Firstly, let there be light. Now this can mean that God created cosmic light throughout the whole universe. It is possible that the universe was in a stage of incompleteness. Just as the earth was. God had not yet finished. God had not yet completed the stars in outer space. The heavenly bodies had been created just as the earth had. In a rough stage of development. All heavenly bodies were in a gaseous stage. But now God is ready to create light. Therefore, he completed some, just some of the stars, causing the gases and the solid elements, which are the protons, the neutrons, the electrons, or whatever the most basic elements are that form, that, that form stars, to form into a solid mass into their completed form. Now, very simply stated, when God said, let there be light, he completed the formation of some stars. Throughout the universe, sun after sun began to give off their light and heat and beauty. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Secondly, what it can mean when God said, or what's it, uh, what does it mean when God said, let there be light. Let there be light can also mean that God created the heaven and the earth by what we call natural law or laws of the nature. Perhaps God created the atoms, the protons, the neutrons, the electrons, the gases or chemicals 
whatever the most minute particles that 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 any that are in energy perhaps god then set in motion the natural laws that are to govern the heavenly bodies now this would simply mean that the stars and the sun began in a gaseous stage and then developed into a solid state of mass and gas just as they do today throughout the far reaches of space when god said let there be light he was setting the motion he was setting the natural law that will take matter and energy and develop suns and stars that would give off light matter and energy that would continue to develop suns and stars throughout all the ages and this is certainly what happens today for science tells us an amazing thing the gases the particles the molecules floating about in out of in outer space they are interacting and they are being compressed together they are being compressed with such a force that a flaming mass of enormous temperature is being created thereby new stars are being born and formed all throughout the universe but of course the laws that cause this phenomena to happen will were were they, they were created and set in motion by god thirdly when god what it can mean when god said let there be light it can mean that god created light completely independent of the heavenly bodies that's the suns and the stars when god created the heaven and the earth perhaps he just hung them in space as we see in verse 1 perhaps the laws which govern their functioning were not yet created were not yet put into motion so the heavenly bodies were just hanging there in space but they were not yet performing their function they were not rotating uh, they were not set in motion they were not flying through space but when god said let there be light the combustible energy that radiates light was given to some of the stars and the suns and the physical laws which govern them were put into operation and the stars of the universe began to operate they began to perform the function for which they were created they gave off light light now i want you to, to note a few points here firstly light is the most pure and brilliant thing known to men light is often used to picture a scene a, a, a scene full of glory and splendor light is often spellbinding and awe inspiring in ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 7 we see the word of god says truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun my second point is this scripture declares that god is light light is what god is within himself within his being within his nature within his character god dwells in the splendor and the glory of light wherever god is the splendor and the glory of light shines out of his being in fact there is not even a need for the sun when god's glory is present right the glory of his presence just beams forth the most brilliant light imaginable so brilliant and so glorious that it would consume human flesh 
God's nature of light is the light of His holiness. God is holy, full of the light and splendor of holiness. And the word of God tells us or shows us in four places about God and light or God being light. First, the first thing is the, the first place is in 1 John 1 verse 5, where John says God is the infinite and eternal light. 1 John 1 verse 5, this is what he says. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is is light and in him is no darkness at all secondly god is the father of lights god is the father of lights in james chapter 1 verse 17 the apostle james writes that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Thirdly, God lives in the inaccessible light. God lives in the inaccessible light. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16, where it says, Who only had Im immortality, Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man had seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. 1 Timothy 6.16 says that. And fourthly, the Bible says that believers shall live eternally with God in his holy city. And, 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 and we are told that his holy city shall be the capital of the new heavens and earth. And it goes on to say that we shall all live there in the splendor of God's light and glory forever and ever. And you can find this in Revelation 21 verse 23 to 24. Revelation 21 verse 23 to 24. Where it says... And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine it, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Third point I want you to note is this. God does not want man dwelling in darkness, but in light. I want you to understand this today, that life cannot exist in darkness. Life can only exist in spiritual light. Therefore, God created light so that man can live, so that man can walk upon earth. In the spiritual realm, as I told you earlier, it is the same. God does not, does not want man living in spiritual darkness, but God wants man to live in spiritual light. God does not want you and I to walk in the dark. God doesn't want us to stumble, fumble. God doesn't want to see us groping and grasping about, wondering where you have come from, why you are here upon this earth, and where are you, uh, you are going. God doesn't want that to happen to us. God doesn't want man in spiritual darkness. God knows that man cannot exist, man cannot live, not eternally, not forever, if he walks in spiritual darkness. Therefore, God has given us the light of life. 
so that we can live and walk, so that we can see and know the truth about the world and about men. God has given us the light of life so that we can see and we can know where we have come from, why we are here upon the earth and where we are going to go. And what is that light of life? It is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In John chapter 1 verse 4, the Word of God says, In Him was life, and life was the light of men. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 now. Verse 4 says, And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Let me repeat that again. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Now, God saw his creation. He saw that creation was good. Light fulfilled its function. The picture is that God looked at the light and saw that it was good. The word good refers to the value. The word good refers to the purpose. The word good refers to the function of something. Hence, God looked and saw that the light was good. It was valuable. Very valuable. It fulfilled its purpose. It fulfilled its function. Now you will ask me, what is the purpose and function of light? I want you to note the statement. God divided the light from the darkness. Unless light existed, unless light was divided from darkness, the earth would be in total darkness. If the earth had no sun, the earth would be engulfed in total darkness. If the earth was still covered by a heavy dense fog, clouds and mist, the earth would be blanketed in total darkness. Now, I also want to tell you this morning or remind you this morning of the five basic functions and purposes of light. At least five. Firstly, light divides darkness to give some light to the earth and universe. Secondly, light makes things grow. Life cannot exist without light. Men, animals, plants, algae, all are dependent upon light in order to live upon the earth. Green plants and algae convert light into energy and they grow thereby. Right? And this process, as we learn in science, is known as photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis. Without light, there would be no plants upon the earth. And if there's no plants, man cannot feed on plants. Animals cannot feed on plants. So light is an absolute essential for life and growth. Thirdly, light gives heat and warmth. Fourthly, light gives color and beauty to things. And fifth, light enables man and animals to see. Light exposes things. All the universe and all the earth. Light exposes. So that man and animals can see and carry out their function in a world of variety and beauty. When God saw the light, he, he saw that it was good. Light fulfilled its function. 
Life was exactly as God had planned. It was designed and perfectly fitted for its purpose. It was useful. It was profitable. It was functioning just as God had willed. Now, the creation of light, the creation of light enables men to see two things. Firstly, light enables men to see the beauty of God's creation. It enables us to see the great work of God in creation, the great intelligence and the power of God. Secondly, light enables man to see how to carry on his work. It enables us to fulfill our purpose upon the earth. But I want you to take note, just being able to see and to work does not mean that a man will fulfill his purpose upon earth. We have to be responsible. We have to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. We have to follow him to reap purpose, meaning and significance in life. We have to use our skills. We have to use our abilities. We have to use our talents just as Christ has instructed us to. Then and only then can man fulfill his purpose and function upon earth. Now God gave us life. God sent his son into the world to show us how to live to show us how to function. Therefore, we have to do what God says or else we will never have meaning and purpose. Not eternal meaning and purpose. Man will never be able to live and function with God. Not eternally, not forever. Unless we live as Christ says. Now we also want to note that God created light and he divided that light from the darkness and he did it for men. And, and if God can do that physically, God will do the same things for man spiritually. God will give men light in the midst of darkness. The light of order. In the midst of chaos. God will give the light of purpose. In the midst of dark emptiness. God will give light. To men for fellowship. In the midst of dark loneliness. God will give the light of knowledge. In the midst of dark ignorance. God. Will create light within the dark chaotic heart of men so that men may know God so that men may feel and sense the glory of God within his very own being you know Colossians 3:10, the apostle Paul tells us and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him I want you to note something else. Light and darkness can never again be joined or reconciled. Not within nature. And the same is true spiritually. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. The Apostle Paul tells us this. Be ye, not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? God 
created light. Light is one of the great words of scripture. And I'm going to give you a few scriptures to, to prove this point. That light is one of the great words of scripture. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. The word of God says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. The next scripture, Matthew chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the very embodiment of the heavenly light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the very embodiment of the heavenly light. Next scripture, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 says, The light of the knowledge of God is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. The light of the knowledge of God is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 9, John chapter 1 verse 9 says, Jesus Christ lights every man who comes into the world. Jesus Christ lights every man who comes into the world. In John, John chapter 12 verse 36, believers are said to become children of light through belief in the light, Jesus Christ himself. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, we see that believers have been transferred from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of Christ, the inheritance of light. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, the apostle Paul says, before they come to Christ, believers are not only in darkness, but are an embodiment of darkness. But when they come to Christ, believers are placed in the light and become an embodiment of light itself. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16, Jesus declares believers are the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 15, again Jesus declares Believe, or, or, or Jesus instructs that believers are to set their light on a candlestick. In John chapter 3 verse 20, the word of God says, Evil doers shun the light. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, we see the creation of light is a picture of expulsion of spiritual darkness. I hope you understand the meaning of light. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first, were the first day. God named the light day and the darkness he named night. I want you to know two facts. First fact is this. God, not man, but God named the light and darkness. Now this is very significant. It shows us that God is the Lord of both day and night, not man. Light and darkness are both part of God's creation. Both are good. Both have their purpose and function in God's creation. This means that man who owes his body, man owes his life to God, both during the day and during the night. Man is to serve God in the day and in the night. Man is not to abuse either the day or the night. You and I are not to abuse the day or night by being lazy, slothful and complacent. We are not 
to abuse the day and night by harming our body, mind and spirit. We are not to abuse the day and night by neglecting, by ignoring or denying God. We are not to abuse the day or the night by partying, drinking and taking drugs. We are not to abuse day and night by being prideful, by, by, by going too far, by, by being immoral, by showing prejudice, favoritisms, partiality. We are not to do these things. Remember, God is the Lord of both day and night. Therefore, there is no need to fear day or night. God is able to take care of us in the light and in the dark. We as believers, we can live every moment of every day, every moment of every night, knowing that God is looking after us. We know that we are in the safe keeping of God. We are always under the watchful eyes of God day and night. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen the second point on verse 5 that i wanted to highlight is this god has given a very special function to both day and night now many of you know the earth rotates and spins on its on its axis and flies through space. It takes about 24 hours for every part of the earth to rotate and face the sun. So when a part of the earth rotates and faces the sun, it is called day. When the other part of the earth faces away from the sun, it is called night. The point is this. Each day and night follows in the steps of the other. In succession of time time is divided between day and night the day gives light for work the day gives light for fulfilling men's function upon earth the night gives the darkness for rest and the renewing of strength spiritually there is a message for us in the creation of day and night. The day shows men that there is a new beginning. There is a new day, a new start, a new arising. The beginning of a new day points towards the beginning of a new life. We call life all over again. We can be born again and spiritually renewed. We can become a new creature, a new man in Christ. John chapter 3 verse 3 to 5, the word of God says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The beginning of a new day points towards the beginning of a new life. Secondly, the beginning of a new day, the awakening out of sleep, points towards the resurrection of the body. John chapter 5 verse 25 Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. The second spiritual message that we get from this verse is this. The night shows man that there is a time to stop. There is a time to end one's activity and lie down and evaluate one's daily life. This points towards the end of life when there is to be a stoppage of life, a lying down of the human body. A time when man can no longer work. A time when man is to be judged for how he has lived upon earth. In Romans chapter 8 verse 6, the Apostle Paul tells us, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, I want to close by giving you two challenging lessons about the creation of day and night. Because the creation of day and night teaches two challenging lessons to us. Firstly, we are to work for God by day. We are to work for God by day. In John chapter 9 verse 4, the word of God says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And second lesson is this. We are to rest in God by night. We are to meditate in God's word day and night. You know, in Psalm 1 verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. I pray this morning, you know, as we are going through this pandemic, as we are, we might be facing challenges, as doubt would have crept in to hurt our faith. I pray that we will look towards that light, that light, the Christ. Let's pray. Father, we come into your presence and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for creation. We thank you for the creation of light and, and night. Help us prioritize, Lord. Even during this journey, Lord, in this season. Father, as we move forward, be our light. If we have faltered, Lord, forgive us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Each time we, we walk into darkness, guide us back to the light. And Lord, as we obediently seek after the light and walk in that light, we pray, Lord, that you reveal your plans and purposes for us. So that, Lord, we will accomplish your plans and purposes. So that we will be responsible and accountable towards your plans and purposes for us, Lord. Even as we start this new week, Lord, we pray, Father, that you give us the strength to continue to walk in that light. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Okay, my friends on Facebook, I hope you are blessed. I hope you continue to walk in the light. And we will see you next week. God bless you. For those who are...